A grade crossing or railroad crossing is an intersection where a railway line crosses a road or path at the same level. Other names include level crossing, railway crossing, grade crossing, road through railroad, railroad crossing, and train crossing. Early grade crossings had a flagman in a nearby booth who would, on the approach of a train, go outside, wave a red flag or a red lantern to stop traffic and clear the tracks. Manual or electrical closable gates that barricaded the roadway were later introduced. The gates were intended to be a complete barrier against intrusion of any road traffic onto the railway. In the early days of railways, much road traffic was horse-drawn or included groups of livestock. It was thus necessary to provide a real barrier. The crossing gates, when closed to road traffic, crossed the entire width of the road. Only 30 seconds before the train arrives at the crossing, the train trips a track circuit near the crossing triggering the crossing signals. The lights begin to flash alternately, and a bell mounted at the crossing begins to ring. After several seconds of flashing lights and ringing bells, the grade crossing equipment begins to lower, which usually takes five to 10 seconds. Some signal boxes will silence the bell once the gates have lowered completely. Most continue ringing the bells throughout, the lights continue to flash throughout regardless. The modern warning gate system, like you see here, was first developed in concept by Stanford Research Institute in the late 1950s at the request of Southern Pacific Railroad and patented in 1966. The design goal of the grade crossing predictor was to provide a constant warning time for trains approaching the grade crossing. Before this invention, the circuits used for activating the crossing warning devices were very simple, activated whenever a train came into a fixed distance, hundreds or even thousands of feet from the crossing. This method required that the crossing be designed to accommodate a train approaching at track speed limit, which led to a longer warning time for trains approaching at a lower speed. Very slow trains could have many minutes of warning time, thus delaying highway traffic and giving false readings. Signals rely on detection to indicate if there's a train there. There are two sections. There's an approach section, which includes a length of track far enough from the crossing on both sides to signal a train for a given track, speed, and Federal Railroad Administration timing requirements and there is an island that extends somewhat on either end of the crossing. So if you look at this diagram, this would be your approach. From D to C would be an approach, and here again from A to B would be an approach. Now here between B and C is what is referred to as the island of the actual crossing. Now we'll look at the parts of a crossing gate system. All crossings that are lighted will have at least a mast with two lights and the crossing bucks. You'll see those on older uh, crossings that, that may not have the, the gate system. They're usually on smaller lines that are not used much. Uh, other systems will have the, the mast with the arm and the weight and the crossing bucks. Now if the, the gate system's in an area where you can't see this mast straight on or good, it will have this cantilever system that comes over and most of those will have at least one set of lights per lane. So if there's two lanes coming through, it'll have two sets of dual lights and an additional crossing buck. Now on top of this mast will either be the bell or on top of this will be the bell. And some of those bells are mechanical or they can be electric. And you, you can see by this graph there is a definite requirements for the uh, size 
uh, striping and where to put the uh, the lights but that's the basic parts and of course there'll be a, a control house uh, usually aluminum or stainless steel that's cooled to keep all the circuitry in that's a look at crossing gates and how they work thanks for watching